Welcome to my Google Hangout. Uh, today we're going to be talking about building executive function school, skills um, one sixth grade classroom at a time. And I'm going to be interviewing two amazing teachers, um, Gayla Savory and um, Kate Chambers. And I'm interviewing them because they have been using a program that I designed created called Seeing My Time. And it's a, it's a workbook that I designed. And we're interviewing them because they're using it in a school setting. And that's not the setting that I was thinking of when I wrote the book. I was thinking of people using it in a private practice setting, which is how I use it, uh, for anybody who has trouble with the executive functioning skills of time management planning and organization. So I have a lot of experience teaching it to individuals and to groups of people with families, um, but taking it into the classroom is another another ball game. And different schools through the years have been playing with it, working with it. But I think Gayla and uh, Kate, Gayla Savory and Kate Chambers, have done just an awesome job of implementing it into a sixth grade classroom. And I realized it was an awesome job when I went to visit their school. So I'm going to share with you the reason why I got so excited. And that is these kids. They invited me to come to be um, interviewed as an author to talk about my work. And I'm actually in this picture. Um, you can, it's kind of like, you know, where's Mary D? You can tell that I am actually about the size of a typical sixth grader. But the other cool thing about this uh, picture is if you notice up on the right hand side above the whiteboard, there's a poster that says metacognition, thinking about your thinking, which I was just so excited about. So I had a wonderful time. The kids asked me some really great questions. Uh, it was They were really, 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 really thinking. They were using metacognition. And that's the part that I want people to understand uh, is the value of seeing my time is the building the metacognition piece. Um, so because the kids asked me questions, I asked them some questions. So I sent them, uh, gave them an evaluation form with some questions. And I got back the most amazing responses. It was a whole, you know, stack of them and I just picked out a couple of good ones it was so hard to do I just had I, it was terrible we had to like do this one no this one this one no so I picked out just four to share with you um, how they have developed their thinking and how this program has changed the way they think about themselves with time management planning and organization so the first quote one of them I chose was this one how has the course changed the way you feel about yourself uh, this young person wrote I can feel like I will be on time and I will have no piles anymore in my head. Isn't that wonderful? No piles anymore in her head. Uh, the next question was answered was, um, how has seeing my time course helped you with school? She goes, seeing my time has helped me with school because now I don't get as stressed about homework and other projects. Even just the breathing and relaxation tips helped me a lot. Oh my goodness. And this has helped with anxiety, and anxiety is in the, on the rise with all of our young people because we're asking so much of their executive systems that aren't mature enough to handle what's coming at them, and it's causing a lot of anxiety and stress. So this young woman was given some tools to manage that for her. Another child wrote, um, in terms of school, I have started on projects when I first get them, not until the last minute. Oh my goodness, that's what everybody wants. You know, it's that future thinking. This kid figured out how to do it on his own. He starts on projects when he gets them. yoo -hoo! Okay, the next one, um, this one really tugged at my heart because you can tell by looking at this young man's handwriting and his spelling that school is a challenge for him. But how has it helped him? I now know how to keep my papers organized. That's huge. Um, how has it changed how you feel about yourself? I feel better about myself that now I've been getting good grades with help in this course. Oh, so this is what they've been able to do with seeing my time in their classroom and just use going cover to cover through this book. So now I'm going to ask these wonderful educators, how did they do it? So Gayla. I have a question for you for starters, and that is, 
Um, how did you get seeing my time into your school? What was the process that you went through to bring this new new curriculum into the school? Because school hours are really valuable. It's hard to get new things into the curriculum. So tell us how you did it, please. Well, it was a long process. Uh, we started a couple years ago when our learning specialist went to a meeting and saw Mary D speak. Uh, Mary D then came to school and did a mini training for our faculty on executive functioning. Um, after that, I was intrigued. I went and saw Mary D do a planning backwards um, at Jesuit. It was wonderful. So we kept seeing little things, little things. Uh, a majority of the staff attended a brain conference at Jesuit and was really jazzed after listening to John Medina, Brain Rules, Ooh. and seeing, yeah, <laughs> seeing you know, lots of workshops focused on executive functioning. The staff decided that it was something that we really needed to, as an entire faculty, embrace and think about how we can implement it, how we can be more cognizant and intentionally teach it. So we looked around for a book, for a book study. Uh, Mary D. gave some ideas, we looked around and we came across and used uh, Boosting Executive Skills from Cooper Kahn. And we did it over a few months. Uh, people would read, come to the faculty meeting, talk about it, share. That was like the first impetus of it really coming in. Um, then I took Mary D's course, which was exactly what we needed at that time. So we've done all sorts of things with the book study as far as sharing with parents. We've done newsletters, um, bulletin boards. We had Mary D come out and do a talk for the parents with her book, The 50 Tips, which was our next book study. Um, and that one uh, really got parents excited. Uh, last This year at fall conferences, the book was used a lot and referenced a lot. It was on the desk. Kate and the middle school team actually had examples on their dry erase boards of what a dry erase board should look like at home and how to use it. So oh, those cool. were things that kind of came together. And Kate is back in the classroom this year. She had been our uh, library and media specialist, was really excited about all of this stuff. And I said, well, wouldn't it be fun if we could figure out a way to get this into the classroom, she goes, yes, we have to do it. So we figured out a way to do it and got it into the classroom and had a ball. Fantastic, fantastic. So um, Kate, what has it been like for you um, to have this in the classroom? Yeah, so we, it, it was, it turned out to be um, once a week in the classroom. So it was built into my, um, English class on okay. Tuesday afternoons, um, okay. and you know it was so important for me to get it into the classroom because I really felt like there's the, there's this assumption that kids just should know how to do it. They know how to do it, but going through your training, I mean, we started back in 2013 when you first came to our school. That's two years ago, and all the right. studies and all this time that we've been studying um, executive functioning, it needs to be explicitly taught. Taught and across all ability levels. I think it's so important. And that was what was really neat to see in the classroom, the kids who struggled and really, really benefited from it, but the kids who um, maybe are higher functioning, but still benefit from it and took those yes. tools and use them in their own way and um, perfected things to, for, for, their, for their own learning. Right, I, I, I was struck by that because one of your really sharp kids, um, you know, his, his comment, like, oh, it's like his, his little li list, but it was something like, this has given me the power to believe that I can go forth and meet my goals and succeed. I mean, it was something like that, you know? <laughs> this kid was like, ooh, I, these are, you know, I got this, I'm ready to roll, you know? So it was, yeah. But it was also, I think, important for our school. We've done the studies, we are the book studies, we heard you speak for us to build that common language. So if we can create that in sixth grade, and our seventh and eighth grade and our um, our science specialists can use that same language as it was important to explicitly teach that to the kids. Right, right. That's really wonderful. Okay, so let's see. So people want to know, um, how did you, so you fit it into your English program. How often did you teach it? Like, how, you know, and for how long? Once a week, 
anywhere okay. from 45 minutes to an hour that it was just using the course notebook and going through the course notebook. That was the intentional part of that. It was also taught, Kate taught it throughout the day with that ex the explicit language and actually taking some of the tools from the book and modifying it for the projects they were doing within the class. So it was EF time and then it was embedded in everything else throughout the day. Um, uh, so you do call it EF time, is that what you did? They call it EF. Um, a funny story. <laughs> Feedback from the kids that you got and we got, one of the things they told us was we didn't start soon enough because we didn't start at the beginning of September because they were going to be at outdoor school and we thought, you know, we want to start, I go to outdoor school to visit and that was the first thing they asked, are we doing EF, are we ready, are we going to start now? So we did some games, was, was kind of the spur of the moment, but that's what they referred to it as, as EF. Yeah, they kind of came up with that yeah. on their own. <laughs> so that, that's and taking was, ownership for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, so how long did it take you to get through it cover to cover? Well, longer than it probably should have uh, because we didn't start until a little bit later. And Kate was out on medical leave from Thanksgiving until after the first of the year. She did not want us to go on. We had to, to stop. Be there. <laughs> Which I thought was fantastic. <laughs> So yes. from that time, I just kind of winged it, and we just did some fun activities to reinforce the language, to make sure that they were staying on top of what we were doing. So, so we give us some finish examples. until end of February. End of February. So give me some examples of the fun activities, because this is what this is what intrigues me. I know you're a creative teacher, but it's like because you know. I, when I do see my time, people get worried about like, I'm not following the book, you know, well, that's not the kind of brain I have and it's not the kind of person I am. It's just like, I want to give you the structure and then go and embellish. So what did you do, Gayla, that created these well, kids? <laughs> I started with, and I want to make sure that people hear this and can access this because before we ever started the EF, I was doing just some research on the brain. I thought they really need to understand what the brain is, how it looks and what the parts are. So mm -hmm. I found Sentis Brain Animation, S-E-N-T-I-S. -E it's YouTube. And they had two videos, very short. One of them, the um, first one was How the Brain Works. Mm -hmm. uh, it talks about the neurons and all of the blasting and the things that are going on and the pathways. And the second one was Areas of the Brain. The three areas of the brain is all it showed. So we watched mm -hmm. those talked about the brain, talked about the prefrontal cortex, and we actually used uh, model magic and made brains. That Great. started the whole thing out before we did anything else. Um, so yeah. that was the first one. Um, we did some games. Um, a lot of what EF is is paying attention to things and observation and organization. I went to outdoor school and we played a game called Three Things. So they would find a partner and look at the partner, make sure you understand the partner partner turns around and changes three pieces of appearance. Turn back around, can you find what they did? Um, we did uh, win, lose, or draw. So I took terms, not just the functions, but terms, e-train, uh, metacognitive, all the terms, threw them in a basket. They would pull them out and have to draw them and guess. The fun part Great. about that one was every one of them was metacognition, metacognition. They're so into metacognition. Um, <laughs> you took it out. <laughs> yeah, I did. I said, nope, it's not in there. Stop guessing. Um, <laughs> we did, um, I have a bulletin board in the main hallway that I did. So I told them, they did posters. You choose. Draw something that you learned that would fit on this bulletin board so they could change it up. So they did posters. Um, Great. The one that I think that was the most powerful was at the very end when we talk about being an advocate and how to be respectful and how to ask for help, whether it's with a parent, a peer, a teacher. And we sat in a circle and we role played. We literally role played. I had some that they drew from a hat. They had some ideas. And we spent a long time just doing that. I think those were the ones that, that stand out in my mind. Um, I think. One of the other things, just because it's me, I, if you can't tell, I get kind of excited and animated. And I did in the classes, some of the things were just over embellished and 
emotions exaggerated. exaggerated. <laughs> emotions took exactly. over, and I was mad about homework and yelling and throwing stuff, and stomped out the door and slammed the door, and yeah, those kinds of things. Yeah, you know, I think that I know I'm always telling when I'm teaching the pro one classes, I tell people you got to be an actress. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you got to put even even when I'm working with individual families. You know, I've got like two people sitting here. I'm an actress. I mean, you know, yeah. I am up ranting and raving and having them jump up and down when they say don't want to do and you know yeah. <laughs> yeah and so that's what is engaging and and what you're doing of course you realize this is you're activating their brains yeah. and you know that 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 storytelling that acting you're engaging them so all those kids who have trouble with focus you're getting the dopamine levels to rise just by all that wonderful energy that you bring to the to the to the room so that's that's just really cool that you did that um so okay um Sound like the kids have responded really well. Yeah. Um, what did you do to build upon it? How did you extend it if, so, from, from the court thing? Using that language, like we use it all the time. And I mean, just today we were pre prepping for our social studies test on Monday and they're doing their study guide and filling out a note card and we stopped, everybody stopped. And I was like, all right, give me three EF functions you're using right now. And we just discussed that. And it's, I mean, it's quick, you know, and then, okay, go back to work or, um, uh -huh. The posters that that metacognition poster, but we have other posters. Um, um, repeat how you to remember, 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 remember to, to repeat, repeat, and how you use your time is how you, you spend your you know, how you spend your time is how you what your life is, right? Right. I feel like we refer to that all the time, and the kids will say, "Well, repeat, to remember, remember to repeat," and um, there's that. So that common language is huge, um, and that is brought every day throughout the day. I did, I brought one with me, an example of, um, let me find it here, just one of the planning backwards, one of the planning backwards sheets that I, oh, here's the others, that I um, prepped for them, you know, that was a big, that's a big part of the course, and using the sticky notes to plot out, and so they had to create, they had to complete an assignment, so I had, I created this sheet where they had uh -huh. to draw, I mean, so, just like exactly what you, what you show them. And then on right. the back, we drew out what they're going to do. We worked backwards. And as a class, we took an actual assignment and then filled in the, the drawing the, or the planning backwards. Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. So you're using it in all the different subjects. You're a self-contained classroom pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah they, so doing... they do. Um, some kids go somewhere else for math, and then they all go somewhere else for science. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so let's see, parents. T you, what? How? How are you continuing to keep parents engaged? Is that being an issue, or are they? What's up with that? Well, that's one of the things that we talked about. That my feeling is that we had, didn't do quite enough of that this year. Um, the course notes lends itself to that when you're doing the survey at the beginning. So we did the survey in the classroom. They took it home and had their parents do it, and then we talked about it and compared that. Um, We've, in, we've included, again, through newsletters and stuff, parents have sought us out when there's been a few assignments and things that have gone home, more so the piles. We had a big time about piles, and I challenged them to go home and take care of a pile. Um, lots of feedback from parents on that. Parents got on board and were taking care of piles. So that's Whoa. something that yeah. we need to talk about, how we're going to do that better next year because that's I think the one thing in my mind that we didn't engage the parents enough yeah and, and that 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 to me was always the thing when people said let's take it into the schools I was like but 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 but, but this we're the parents yeah. no. because you, you as a teacher can't do all of that because it needs to also be reinforced at home right and then you and then you have the apple not fall from the tree situation where some of the parents are really challenged themselves so that's really cool, giving the, the parent challenge for piles. Well, you know what I you think done? having you come out when you came out and did your talk was perfect because yeah, I think exciting. all of the parents got the book, the 50 tips, so they were mm -hmm. really well versed with what we were doing too. Yeah, yeah. You know what you can do, Gayla, next year? I don't think I talked about this in your pro group course because, you know, I always add new things. I add new things, you know, as I learn new things. And <laughs> and um, it's it's to, about the piles thing. What a great challenge would be to t I have them now. I have them take a picture of the pile they're working on, okay? 
uh -huh. take a picture, set a timer, okay, for 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and then the first object on top of the pile, you have to ask these questions. Do I want you or need you anymore? Okay? And so if it's something that, you know, it's like, I don't need this anymore. Give it to Goodwill. Time to be somebody else's treasure, you know. And then the things that, that, are, that are in the pile that need to have a home, that's the one you keep, okay? And then when the timer goes off, you take another picture, okay? And you compare the progress that you made. Um, because when we have a big room of piles, when we're done with one pile, they take a lot of energy. And um, so when we're done, all we look, step back, and all we see are those the piles. It's like, well, I haven't done anything. <laughs> but I think it would be great to have like either a Facebook page or you know pictures, sharing your pictures of all the piles that you moved. Um, I think that would be a fun thing to engage the parents in, like you know garages. My husband and I we went to a garage after reading. Oh, I told him that line about, um, do you bring me joy, that author who's from Japan, who's supposed to pick up every object and say, does this bring me joy? <laughs> I was like, you don't bring me joy. You don't bring me joy. It's like, look at our garage. So I had this picture of this mound in our garage. And then we called, you know, 1-800-GET-JUNK, you know, and they came and took it away. And then I had another picture of, you know, the, you can see the floor of the garage, you know. My son, who's 20, you know, just turned 30, he was like, thank you, Mom, for getting rid of that stuff because he knew it would be there when, you know, he inherits it all. <laughs> so <laughs> it's fun to do that. You know, that's another way you could do it with piles. So anything you could do with getting them posting something like that or sharing um, mm -hmm. YouTube videos, all these things that we're doing, it would be really fun to see them <laughs> share them. That would be really cool. So what else would you guys do differently? You've mentioned a few things, but what else would be different? Well, we're definitely going to start earlier. I mean, okay. the kids said that. That was something that they were pretty, you know, we needed to start right away. Um, I think one of the other things that I'd like to do is include um, more of the drawing in a different part, not just during EF time. Because the ah. drawing for some of the kids really, it really resonated for them. So mm -hmm. doing the backwards and being able to draw the pictures out, I think I'm going to include much more of that um, next year. And we yeah. are going to continue next year. Um, yeah. I will also be going because we did it for the year and Kate has been awesome about keeping it going throughout the year. Um, I will be going into seventh grade at least the first month, if not six weeks of school. What exactly am I going to do with them? I'm not sure yet, but we've got to keep it going. We can't just give it to them and say, you're trained in EF now, go forth. So we'll continue with that somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what you can do is just, you don't have to do the book, but you can come in with another activity that's drawing your assignment. Right. You, know, you can have fill out their afternoon schedule. You know, what's, what's, what's your week like? Where are you going to fit your homework? That kind of stuff. That is something new we're doing next year that we're both very excited about. We designed a new planner. Oh, show us. The planner that they had really was not useful. And that was really interesting, too, when I said, okay, who's using their planners? Is there a monthly calendar in your planner? Some of them go, I don't know. Yeah, they just don't know. Yeah. I mean, so we've redone. And it was like in this weird spot. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, you're not going to use it. It's not there. So we've redone it. We kind of took a little bit of Mary D's my to That's include fine. with it. So <laughs> Go for it. Go it for will, it. Yeah. And we can send. Oh, oh. It's a two, yeah. It's a two, two page. page. Am I going opposite here? Oh, wow. Look yeah. at this. It's a two. So every day is a two page spread. Right. And so, um, am I good? Yeah. Okay. Your uh, chill time. Oh, I love that. Motivation at the top. Yeah, my dinner time, my homework time. Um, we have our circles for predicting how long they're going to take and how long it actually took. Oh, um, awesome. Uh, over here is their evening they need to plan. Mm -hmm. um, supplies that they need. Supplies, yeah. Test quiz tomorrow, long-term assignment work. And oh. then the other side is just the other subjects, the same right. big media. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. 
So we're oh, going so to um, get these copied, and it's going to be in the front. They're going to have one binder next year in middle school, and it will be the front of their binder. And so we're going to awesome. have a two-page spread of the calendar for the month of calendar. And, and they have a daily. Um, she's a, rolled it out this year with one or two. Yeah, I, I piloted it with one of my students, and mm -hmm. she loves it. Um, her parents love it. And... Um, we're, we're still working on, you know, what is chill time and, you know, well, violin lessons, that's not chill time. That's obligated time, you know, mm -hmm. like being able to distinguish what is just relaxing and what, what you need to be at. So um, there definitely will be education even for the sixth graders next year. The, the, my kids moving up to seventh grade will be able to educate them on really how to use it. But we'll put yeah. this into effect with the first of the school year. So. Yeah. Wow. Oh, congratulations, you guys. That is awesome. I just <laughs> love the mission. And I love the schools. I love the fact that you're still having them estimate and then record the space of time. Mm -hmm. Yep. That, that is just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just jumping out of my skin. This is the coolest thing. <laughs> like, this is what, you know. Oh, I love creativity, and I love just taking an idea and see people like expand on it and do yeah. cool things. You guys are just really, really amazing. So, I just want you guys to keep in touch. We'll have to do this again next year and see what you do yeah. what happens with the seventh graders because it's really awesome. It's just wonderful. Uh, let's see. Madeline is around. If we have any other questions that uh, we've got coming, let's see. Um, Anything else that you wanted to say? Do you have anything else to share and show that you brought in? Is that done? Okay, got I it covered? Just that if people are thinking about doing this to jump into it, it has been so beneficial. I think the kids are feeling better about, you know, their time, being organized, being prepared. And I, I think the thing Kate said at the beginning, too, that um, it's not just for the struggling kids. It's for everybody. They may be functioning really well right now, but you can never have enough tools in your toolbox. And they all took some piece of it and tweaked it to help themselves become better at what they were doing. And that's what our goal was. Right. Yeah. It was important, you know, that the two-year build-up to this, I think, was so important because our staff is on board. And so with our staff being on board, they've read the book, they've we did, um, when we did the 50 tips, we did that as a book study. Each, we teamed up and we were assigned um, tips and then we acted them out or um, did like a little skit about each of those tips. And so building that, I keep going back to this common language, but I think it's so important just building that language even among, not for only in the class for the kids, but to have the whole faculty on board was so helpful. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, but I want to share a story about one of the students that our science yeah. teacher shared with me, which was really exciting. I think it's the student who you mentioned earlier, but um, we had a student who keeps forgetting to bring their science book to science class. And it's a transition. My classroom's upstairs. The science lab's downstairs. They have a locker to go to. There's a lot to, to juggle. Um, so the science teacher said, who can help this student? Who can help this student figure this out? So another student raised their hand and said, I will, I will. Now remember in EF class. And went through like this whole process that he learned in EF class. And it, it's like that's exactly it. It was awesome. It was great. But like we're yes. using it, but they're using it. I mean, you know, it, they're learning it and they're using it. Yeah, I know one of one of the feedback was a little girl who said that uh, she, her favorite strategy was planning ahead by planning backwards. She goes, and I use it without even thinking about it. You know, for other things. You know, so they're 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 really absorbing it metacognitively. And I think that's what you guys have done so beautifully because it is so seductive to go through seeing my time and cherry pick. Mm. Take out the strategy, take out planning ahead by planning backwards, take out drawing the assignment, you know. It's so tempting to do that, but you don't build the metacognition. Mm -hmm. You don't know the why. And I'll tell you an adult story connected to that. I'm working with a family and um, they have a military family. And I just finished planning ahead by planning backwards. And the, when we were sharing the key ideas, the dad said, you know, in, in my job in, 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 the, in, the, in the military, um, 
we are planning backwards all the time to plan operations. You know, you start at the end, you know, at the end result and you plan backwards. He goes, but I never thought to use it with writing papers or doing anything else. You know, he, he thought yeah, to a strategy uh -huh. for one situation, but yeah. he would never made the transfer. Right. And that's what you ladies are doing, and I am so excited about it. <laughs> that is so awesome. Now, there's people, okay, there's people out there who say, we've got one question, can we get a copy of this planner? There's a whole bunch of people who are asking questions of that. I don't know if I share that with people, um, how we would do that. Uh, you guys, well, you know. We, yeah, we you can want brainstorm to think how we can do that. Like, yeah. we'll, we'll brainstorm, we'll, we'll brainstorm, yeah. and we'll talk, and we'll try to figure out, you know, because you're still working on it. I don't think yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah, I mean, this is like, I think, the fourth draft, and... Yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll definitely be ready for the kids, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll we can all work together and figure that out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what? Yeah. Is it, yeah. 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 It's all. Yeah. We'll we can use it through my website or something like that. That would be awesome. We'll, we'll do another Google Hangout to show the final <laughs> project. And then we have another another question somebody asked me was what would I recommend for preparing the teacher who will be teaching this? So Gayla, what do you recommend? Say that one more time. Teachers, what would you, rec you recommend for preparing the teacher who will be teaching this? What do you, they need to do? I think just really embrace it and know what you're doing. Um, and be willing to <laughs> dance and, and change because as you're going through it, there were lots of times where the conversation needed to change. You know, it may have been starting on one thing, but I could see where, wait a minute, we got to back up or we need to move here. This is important. So I think just being flexible, mm -hmm. you know, was yeah. really important. And so sharing of yourself. I remember one day I went in there and I was having a really bad day. And I, I stopped. I said, wait a minute, I, I can't do this. I need a minute. So we sat in our chairs, we put our hands behind our heads, we took deep breaths, we got ourselves centered, and I said, okay, now I think I can go on. So okay. living it, sharing it, using the language with them. Yeah. Do you think it was critical that um, you did the pro course, one course with me? Could you have done it just by going through the workbook? I mean, through the instructor's manual? I went through, well, did it with you, then I went through the instructor's manual and practiced and did things on my own, shared with different people to kind of bring it all together. Um, and spending some time in the classroom, too, without teaching it, just to see how I could make it fit in the classroom. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you, but yeah. the teachers who should teach it, should they go through Mary B's course? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because, you, because and then because you don't have to. People are doing it with the instructor's manual, but it's it's more work, I would think. I mean, you you go yeah. back and refer to it, but I don't yeah. think I would have been nearly as effective. And I do think I was effective. We were oh, effective I did, yeah. if oh, I yeah, had yeah. not been through the course with you, because there's a lot of questions that came up from all the other people when I took the course with you too that I hadn't thought about. So I right. think just picking up that instructor's manual would not. I don't think you'd be as effective. You, I don't think yeah. the outcome would be what you want it to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, I tried to write it so you wouldn't need me. <laughs> well, I think it's the, it's the brainstorming and the ideas that everybody has together, you know, and yeah. that's how you that's what you're teaching too. So. Yeah. So it really is that flexibility and how to be fun because I think people when the trouble with a, with something like the instructor's manual is it's scripted, mm -hmm. and people you know people get anxious about scripted things. They think they have to read it from the book, you know, and, and then that's not real. And, um, and, the, and it's hard to get buy-in for yourself. You're not comfortable. And so, yeah, your flexibility, uh, uh, Gayla, is really the key, one of the key things is just kind of going with the flow. Yeah, I never know what's going to come out of my mouth and what stories I'm going to tell, you know, because you have, you have to go with what's happening. Now, the, um, the, this one more question was here so far. Was, were the kids on board from the start? How did you get buy-in? So this people may have come in a little bit late on this or something. What? How did you guys get them on board? I think what really got them on board was those two videos that I started with and just talking about the brain and building a brain and thinking about, you know, how do you think? What do, you know, what, what makes that brain work? 
and telling them too that a lot of what they were going to do was stuff that they were going to have to teach their parents and let their parents help them with mm -hmm. that that was and Kate mm -hmm. was really good about that as we we're going through stuff I would ask Kate something as Mrs. Chambers the teacher and then I would ask her now Mrs. Chambers you're a parent so right now you need to not listen to this or Mrs. Chambers I need you to listen to this and be a parent how do you feel about it so them seeing both sides I think was really valuable yeah and how she'd implemented it at home as a mom and I think too yeah. also that the science of that your brain is this part of your brain is not developed till you're 25 so how old are you guys and so how many years do you have to go mm -hmm. and so let's use tools that will help you while your brain is developing fully so I think that yeah. was a big part of it too yeah and, and that's really key language because I think a lot of people also think that you're well I've taught the program they're going to be adults you're right you know their brain is done mm -hmm. you know and that's the I think that's the hardest thing to get through people's minds is that they need it they keep needing it because because the challenges are going to rise so they need to be reminded as the challenges keep coming and that what you're trying to do is really get them to stay in school stay engaged with learning and feel like they're capable so that they go all the way through instead of being overwhelmed and giving up. That's the thing that I keep seeing. You know, by the time the kids that come see me, I've got so many kids giving up. And it's just like, I shouldn't be giving up, you know. Uh, but they've, they, they've been, you know, beat up because their brains weren't able to match the requirements. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you guys, you're awesome. I know Kate has to go pick up her kindergartner. <laughs> and this is a Friday. And you guys have done this after school. And you are just angels to do this. Um, you know, I am so thrilled. You just made my day for the next year, okay? <laughs> because you you have uh, you exemplified everything I love about teachers. And you too, I just give you a big hug across the <laughs> you know, across town here through the internet because you're amazing, amazing teachers, and your kids are so blessed, and um, your school's blessed and you are taking this into the world in a wonderful way because you don't know, we don't know which of those kids is going to make a huge difference in the universe. You know, it's that butterfly effect, you know, and it could be the kid you least expect. Yeah. It could be the one that does the most amazing things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bless you all. Take care and thank you everybody for joining in this adventure of ours, our first Google Hangout. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Mary Daisy. Okay, bye-bye now.